Okay, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class. Thank you, online students, for joining us. Uh, welcome to our uh, in-person students and to our e-learning students who will be listening to this lecture later on. Uh, today, we are going to have our um, presentations. I'm really excited because I'll get to see the faces of our online students uh, who I've never get to see. Uh, actually, sometimes you teach people for three uh, years and you just don't get to even see their faces, which is a sad thing, but I think this is quite an exciting thing for me. I can get to see your faces, get to hear your voices as well. Um, so we'll uh, begin. Before that, can we just pause for a word of prayer? Can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Just pray for those who are presenting that God will remove every spirit of fear, <laughs> nervousness, and anxiety. That will just be a good time of learning and um, getting to know each other, just fellowshipping, okay? It's more like getting to know each other, fellowshipping, and also just, you know, um, uh, learning from each other. Yeah, so it will be a good time of bonding. So can somebody lead us in prayer, please? Anyone would unmute your mics, online students, and lead us in prayer? Anyone? No one wants to pray? Okay, let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for this uh, day. We thank you, God, for the gift of life. We thank you that we could, um, that we have your breath in us, God. We thank you that because you live um, and we have your life and nature in us, we can reign in life through every challenge, through every circumstances, everything that um, oppresses us, depresses us, pulls us down. We thank you, God, that we are more than overcomers uh, through him who loved us uh, and through him who uh, reigns through us and um, encourages us and strengthens us and opposes us with his righteous right hand. We thank you, God, for who you are in our lives. We want to just say that we bless you, we love you, and we want to thank you, God, that because you live, we can live, we can face our todays, we can face every moment, and we can also face our tomorrows. We want to thank you, God, for um, this time. Even as uh, each of the students present, we just want to thank you. That will be a good time of learning from each other, bonding, fellowshipping, uh, getting to see, hear, and know each other. And we pray, God, that it will be just be an enriching time. We pray for all those who are presenting that you remove every spirit of fear, and nervousness and anxiety and god we pray that um, even as we learn how you stewarded revivals and um, how you visited people how you uh, stirred their hearts to greater spiritual awakenings that god it will revive our hearts to pray for revival in our city in our nation and God, that we will be people who you can use to birth your revival here in, uh, on earth, God. Whether it's in our family, it's in our workplaces, in our city, in our nation. God, we pray that you would use us. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I'm quite disappointed that, um, you know, many of our students are giving a lot of excuses in the last moment. It's very sad. Um, uh, so, you know, if you had informed me earlier, at least a day before, then I could have prepared and asked somebody else so that we don't waste our time because time is very precious um, and we have a lot of portion to finish. And if you mention the last moment, it's very disappointing, it's very sad and it's, uh, uh, and, you know, I don't know how to fill in the time. If you had told me earlier, I could have worked things out uh, which would have helped. So. Please, next week, if anyone is not able to present, it's going to lose, you lose points because I need to be fair with all the other students and I've also given you 10 days uh, to prepare. And if you're not able to share next week, please let me know uh, much in advance so that, you know, uh, I can be ready and uh, uh, we can use that time profitably, okay? Mm -hmm. So today we have um, abhishek who is our first student but he says he will present it in the um, second half of the class uh, the next person is andrew monroe so um, and then angeline also said that she's not going to present today so andrew and then arista and then we'll have biju and then uh, daniel oliver okay so uh, when you are presenting please let me know 
um, if this is uh, if you're you're saying any additional content you can just say this is additional content okay um, so over to Andrew are you there Andrew oh Andrew is also not there okay uh, next is uh, Arista Moses. Arista Moses, are you there? Oh, she's also not there. Okay, um, over to um, uh, Daniel Oliver, thank you, Daniel, so much for. No, Arista, not da uh, uh, Biju. Biju is next. Biju, are you there? Yes, yes. Uh, can you put on your video if it's okay? Or uh... Uh, actually, I was driving. I stopped the car. Uh, is is uh, you want to see me? Or... <laughs> no, it's okay. We can uh, just hear you. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. And uh, it's a rainy morning. And uh, I hope all are uh, doing good. So today, uh, I'm going to uh, speak about uh, two uh, persons. First one is Charles Spurgeon. Uh, and uh, the second one is uh, Mary Slesser. So <clears throat> Charles Spurgeon, uh, born in the year 1834, as the oldest of 10 children of a total 17 children. So his uh, uh, parents had 17 children, but unfortunately seven children uh, passed away. So uh, Charles Spurgeon was the oldest of 10 children. So his father and grandfather were uh, preachers. So his upbringing was godly. Uh, Charles Spurgeon lived between 1834 and 1892. So as we all know, he is, no, he is known as Prince of Preachers. So you imagine in the year 1834, the, uh, uh, there was no modern technology like this, like uh, print, maybe printing press was there, I don't know. Uh, but still, uh, you know, that, that time he was known as uh, Prince of Pre Preachers. And uh, how he got saved, that was an interesting story. Uh, actually, uh, he went to a primitive Methodist church when he was uh, a teenager. And uh, by accident, uh, he got into that uh, uh, church. And uh, that day, the preacher didn't show up. So at this point, as a, uh, uh, what to say, so there was a man in that uh, congregation. Um, so to fill the gap, that man got up and gave a message on, uh, based on Isaiah 45, uh, verse 22. So uh, that verse I'll, I'll read. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am the God and no one else. Uh, once again, I'll, I'll read. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am the God and no one else. So this man uh, didn't have anything to say. So he repeated this verse uh, many times. Uh, at the end of that uh, 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 reading, I mean uh, speaking, he pointed the finger to the Charles Spurgeon who was sitting at the rear end of the church and he, uh, he asked him to look to Jesus. So uh, Charles Spurgeon was uh, amazed and astonished. He went back to, uh, he went back to uh, home and uh, uh, he uh, he uh, he prayed to Jesus and he eventually he got saved. So that was his uh, testimony about the salvation. So uh, he was the pastor of the New Park Street Chapel in London from 1854 for 38 years. So just imagine 38 years. It's not a 
uh, small period even uh, three to five years uh, the congregation nowadays cannot uh, you know um, tolerate the pastors because of uh, you know various reasons but just imagine so that was the uh, anointing upon that person charles Spurgeon. that means he started his ministry as a pastor at the age of 20. Uh, so he gained such a reputation that within a year and a half he was invited to preach at the historic new park street chapel in london so he was a teenager uh, teenager teenager of age 20. so that age itself uh, he he was invited to that reputed uh, church the very famous church in london so you can just imagine uh, just uh, getting invited to say biggest church or biggest mega church in bangalore uh, so eventually that committee of that church assigned him uh, initially assigned him six months but uh, listening to his uh, anointed preaching um, they kept him there for 38 years so uh, so that was uh, you know that the, his preaching was uh, dramatic in nature and uh, at the same time penetrating through the hearts of the people and many got saved and god was with uh, charles Spurgeon, and the congregation grew rapidly that could seat around 5600 people uh, Spurgeon was invited to preach across england and preached at many london's greatest halls uh, his uh, sermons were used to feature in Monday edition of the London Times and even in New York, New York Times also. While he was dramatic in his style, he was strong in his convictions and direct in his messages. So that was about Charles Spurgeon. Many, even nowadays, you can uh, see in YouTube many of his sermons. There were so many fans of uh, Charles Spurgeon and uh, many modern preachers got uh, uh, inspired by Spurgeon. So second uh, person which I am going to speak today is Mary Slusser, missionary in Nigeria, West Africa. Uh, she was a reformer as we uh, studied in, uh, you know, in our course uh, 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 about social reformers, different social reformers. So she was one of the social reformers. So she lived between 1848 and 1915. So in August 1876, at the age of 28 years, Mary Slusser left Edinburgh, Scotland as a Presbyterian missionary to work among the Efik tribe in the Calabar region of West Africa, Nigeria, basically. So she was 27 when she heard that David, David Livingston had died and she wanted to follow his footsteps. So as we all know uh, about La David Livingston, he was a missionary to Africa and he was such a uh, such a god and uh, holy spirit anointed missionary and he did a lot of uh, sacrifice in his life also he worked for the lord and did a great ministry in the africa so he he was uh, eventually he got unwell and he was shifted to the united states uh, his native place and uh, he uh, he was passed away in the United States and uh, uh, what uh, the people of Africa did was they they took out his heart and uh, buried in West Africa because uh, his, his heart was always with the uh, African continent. So this uh, uh, lady, Mary Slesser, um, was a great missionary the calabar people in west africa nigeria had a superstition they believed that if a woman had twins one of them had to be a devil and so the twins were left in the one of the twins were left in the forest in clay pots to die mary slesser successfully fought against this superstition even india uh, we could see william carey uh, the great missionary to india fought against uh, the sati and uh, he uh, he was instrumental in abolishing that uh, evil practice so serving several decades decades among the calabar people mary slesser fox focused on evangelism taking care of orphans and native children promoting women's rights establishing social change education local governance and encouraging trade 
we studied a missionary is the one who who goes to a different uh, culture stays there for a long time say a decade or two decades understand their language learn their language and uh, be with them spreading the good news about jesus and uh, eventually converting a lot of people making a lot of social impact social reformations and uh, uh, so so many missionaries even india we can see uh, we could see uh, mother teresa and uh, you know, the greatest missionary who established uh, christian medical college in velour so we all know so the takeaways which i want to give you is pray morning we need to have a seal for god's work <clears throat> second one is we may have to leave our comfort zone so in charles swerger's case also in mary slesser case they were uh, living in a very affluent uh, uh, settings like london scotland so they left everything and uh, put their lives for uh, god's ministry third takeaway is always look for the holy spirit guidance without holy spirit we cannot do anything that's what jesus said in john 15 abide in me and i will abide in you and without me uh, you cannot do anything so let us abide in him let us uh, focus on jesus let us spread the good news do the good works uh, preach the gospel uh, pure gospel that is uh, very uh, very uh, you know very strange i mean not strange uh, it's not uh, very common in these days pure gospel pure word and uh, uh, that is what we are before i conclude i want to read out a, a few lines your past is a waste paper your present is a newspaper your future is a question paper if you do not use your life carefully your life will become a tissue paper so thank you so much uh, god bless you the last saying <laughs> the last saying on newspaper tissue paper sorry <laughs> was really good thank you <laughs> uh, that really cracked us up in the morning thank you so much uh biju i just wanted to um, ask you um uh, you know thank you for your presentation it was good and for the additional information uh, anything more about mary selsa you uh, you know there's very little given here but anything more you research about mary selsa sorry ma'am i couldn't get a lot of uh, you know more time on to research mm -hmm. uh, sorry <laughs> okay. uh, Uh, so uh, i just like to ask you these two charles virgin and mary selser um, how what did what is their role in revival what can you learn about revival visitation and the move of god to their lives uh, in case of charles virgin he he uh, at, uh, he preached uh, from the word of pure word of god and uh, he he was instrumental to attract uh, so many people to jesus christ and uh, you know and that that uh, initiated the revival in uh, london in uh, england and in the case of mary sessler uh, you know he she uh, she was uh, you know uh, the, you can imagine the, the those days 1834 the condition of west africa so uh, there were a lot of superstitions there were a lot of uh, evil practices that's what that that, that were happening in that community so she uh, she was so uh, diligent i mean uh, and uh, you know um, he was she was so passionate about uh, you know making reforms uh, uh, in that uh, community okay thank you uh, biju that was a good job can we clap for biju everyone uh it was good to hear your voice but we couldn't see you but we hope next time we can see you are you from bangalore biju uh no basically i am from god's own country our <laughs> 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 students are wondering what is that god's own country is kerala but i am staying in bangalore for two decades for almost 20 years 
okay. Because you said it's uh, raining, so that's why it's raining here for us as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm in Bangalore now. <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. So you should visit our Bible College sometime so we can get to see you. So where? Which place, ma'am? <laughs> this is in K Narayana Pura. So anytime you okay. can come in the morning and attend some classes, and we can get to see. Uh -huh. you. Okay, okay, sure, sure. Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, over to Andrew. Andrew, are you there? You like to present? Ma'am, can I do it in the second lecture? Uh, okay, if we, if all of them want to do second lecture. <laughs> second lecture then i don't know where what to do in the first lecture okay over to daniel he's already up there uh, thank you daniel good to see you finally uh, after so many uh, months uh, yeah thank you over to daniel yeah good morning everyone praise the lord so today i'll be uh, talking about evangelist dl moody so he was born uh, in 1837 in Chicago. Uh, his full name is actually uh, Dwight Lehman Moody, uh, which most of the people we don't know. We know him by DL Moody only. And uh, he was a like very good evangelist in the later half of 19th century. And uh, they were totally nine siblings, and he was the fifth one among them. And uh, he got saved uh, by his Sunday school teacher in the year 1855. And uh, uh, D.L. Moody, he started a uh, shoe sales uh, business in Chicago because uh, when he was four years old, uh, his father passed away. And since childhood, uh, the full family, they were in poverty. So, because of that reason, he started this work. So, uh, after that, he started teaching in Sunday school. And uh, he, he was a part of YMCA, Youth Men Christian Association. Then he started taking Sunday school in some saloons and uh, mm -hmm. reaching out to the people who, who don't have, like, education like they don't have anyone who can teach them then he was working um, and doing some social work to some people also like cleaning like uh, mentioned in, in our books like janitorial jobs and all used to do in the cities and uh, in 1860 uh, uh, dl moody he left his business and he served as a YMCA city missionary there. Eventually, um, eventually, uh, he was um, yeah he was taking Sunday schools also there. And then. Uh, he started his own church after some time uh, then uh, yeah. and then that church uh, in, he started in february 28 uh, 1864 uh, that church is known as the moody church in today's state then he used to play music and uh, and he used to travel around uk ireland and many places and uh, preach the word of god then in the later half in 9, 1879 he opened some seminaries for you uh, young women and for and uh, shortly after that he opened a same a seminary for some boys like mount hermon school for boys and that is known as the moody bible college in today's state and after that he was uh, he gave birth to uh, this this thing student volunteer movement for foreign mission in which almost 5000 students they were studying and uh, in this data is for like 1911 
and uh, he was spreading the gospel to europe south africa and many other places so basically uh, whatever uh, uh, we can know from dl moody's life was like he was so humble he was so grounded to earth and he was serving so many people in every nations and uh, talking about william booth the salvation army uh, he was born uh, in 1989 he was born in 19 yeah 1989 and then after that he 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 was the like founder of salvation salvation army which was this name actually came later because it was called by several other names before mm, uh, in 1865 uh, the christ revival society was the name given uh, and then later this name became the christian mission then after that in 1878 the salvation army was the name given to this uh particular group and the main motive uh, for the sal uh, salvation army was to go among the poorest most needy alcoholic criminals prostitutes and many other people and go and spread the gospel of jesus to all the all these places and uh, this is like 58 countries it is written in our books like what i have seen is like more than 100 countries salvation army is currently moving and uh, he also used to sing several songs and uh, some of his books were like uh, very good and uh, they were also some best sellers and uh, what we can like we can what we can see from like what what we can conclude from all this is learning and what we can implement in our life is like we we have to do social work free education so that and teach preach the gospel to the needy people all over the world thank you thank you daniel i uh, just like to say like uh, dl moody uh, you know he uh, like uh, daniel mentioned that uh, you know he um, uh, started sunday school uh, you know and um, um, uh, you know and he had sunday schools in various saloons and you know ministered to so many children you know why he was so passionate about ministering to children anyone knows why he was passionate to minister to children ma'am he himself was saved by a sunday school teacher only yes yes so when he was a young boy uh, he was working in a, a shoe store okay uh, because he's very poor he's working in a shoe store and um, uh, his uh, sunday school teacher one day you know uh, he just felt the need to share the gospel with each and every student in his class so he wanted to share the gospel with dl moody and uh, he was working in the shoe store so he walked up and down that road so many times just you know getting the courage to go and speak to this child who was working in the shoe store but finally he mustered up that courage and he went and he shared the gospel with him and dl moody accepted uh, christ and so that's why i think he had such a uh, he received christ at such a young age he knew the importance of sharing the gospel with uh, you know uh, with also with children and we see um, uh, you know uh, sometimes we feel that sharing the gospel with children is pointless but many of them from a very young age when they shared the gospel when they believed you can see the lasting and the great work that god uh, has done through them and also the bible colleges he started still exist today we have the dl moody bible college in the us and also um, uh, william booth salvation army salvation army is very very active even today 
you know, uh, and helping uh, in many places and also doing a lot of social uh, welfare. Uh, so uh, what is your take on these two people uh, in terms of revival and visitation and moves of God? How did they, you know, stir revival? What did they do birth revival? What did they do towards revival? And they were like, ma'am, passionate towards uh, uh, the re revival so that they can spread like till the last breath they were working for that revival, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Daniel. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. That was good. Can we clap for Daniel, please? Thank you. Good job. Uh, we'll move on to uh, the next person, Asapu Raj. Come on here, Asapu, so all the students can see you. <laughs> Asapu is our in-person student, so he's going to come and take my seat, and then he's going to teach. Not my seat. It's not my seat, but... Hey, good morning, everyone. Good to see all of you. Today, I want to, I want to share with two missionaries, C.D. Stud and uh, Amy Carmichael. First, first missionary was C.T. Stud. The full name of C.T. Stud was Charles Thomas Stud. Was British missionary. Known his work in China, India, and Africa. Born into a wealthy family and celebrated cricketer. Stud shocked the world by leaving behind the frame and everything to spread the gospel to the people across the, these three continents. His life was sacrificing the faith and dedicating remains a powerful example to each one of us. The key points on his missionary journey, his missionary work in his early life, Stud was one of the Carbridge Seven, means a group of young men who dedicated themselves to missionary work in China in late 18th. Uh, is missionary in uh, China. After joining Hudson Tyler China Inland Mission, Stud spent several years to learn modern work culture sensitive to minister the local population, his work culture sensitive and the importance of immersing oneself in local custom for effective evangelism. His missionary in India and Africa. After his time in China, Stats moved into India where he continued his pastoral and evan evangelistic effect. His later years, despite suffering from serious health issues, uh, starts journey to Africa where he founded the Heart of Africa missions and focusing on outreach to people. Uh, the personal takeaways that we can take from CT starts uh, sacrificing and giving prioritism to God's mission. Uh, starts decision to leave behind the wealth and fame challenges as to evaluate what we prioritize prioritize in our lives because he believed that if Jesus Christ he God had died for me no sacrifice can be greater for me to make for him that's a very powerful that I when I was researching about his life and and also urgency of gospel uh, starts belief in the return of Christ gave him a sense of urgency he written as that sharing faith and serving others should be an, at the forefront of our lives, especially in, the, in a world facing moral and spiritual crisis. Uh, conclusion, 
that I want to give you about his missionary journey. C.T. Studd's life was marked by extraordinary faith and committed his work across China, India, and Africa. Uh, his legacy continues to inspire us to live with purpose, prioritize spiritual goal, our material gain. The one wonderful quote that has he given in our publication. Some wish to live within the sound of church and chapel bell. I wish to run and rescue missions with the yard of hell. Such a powerful quote he was given to us. The second missionary was Amy Carmichael. Uh, Amy Carmichael was a Christian missionary from Ireland who spent 55 years in India without for love means without any rest, any holiday. She is known for rescuing children from the temple, slave and founding them Donover Fellowship. Her life demonstrates extraordinary faith, compassion and dedication to serving the minor, mineralism. Her mission and uh, vision in late 19th century, Army, Army left a calling to serve the most especially women and children. In 1901, she founded the Denver Fellowship, which provided shelter and educate, education to children rescued from temple slavery. They, the mission, her mission was not just about conversing, but, but practical care and love. Challenges that Amy Carmichael faced uh, uh, significant culture and social barrier as a foreigner woman in India she focused on long-term support providing education care and spiritual growth her writings particularly her letters and poems continue to inspire many today also uh, that personal takeaway that we can take from her life Amy Carmichael's work inspired future missionaries and influence global child welfare move movements. The Denver Fellowship still exists today, continues her legacy on compassion and care. Conclusion that I have to give in her life, Amy, Amy's courage and dedication to rescuing children is a very powerful example of faith in action. Her legacy continues to inspire Christians efforts and especially re regarding children's right and social justice that powerful quote that he give, have given to us you can give without loving but you cannot love without giving thank you They're not actually associated with revival. They're supporting, like uh, uh, coming to the army, Karmakil. She individually affected the people, the people who spoke into her. They got personal visitation moves of God. Also, when she personally yeah. OK, yes. Uh, what about CT stud? He is a missionary of evangelist. Okay, but uh, how did he birth revival? The move of God. What was his contribution? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, can we clap for um, Asapu? So we see Asapu is uh, uh, mentioned about CT Stud. Uh, he was an, a cricketer, uh, but, you know, he gave his heart to the Lord uh, when D.L. Moody preached. Um, and he was, uh, you know, he was so stirred in his heart to share the uh, gospel. And he joined uh, Hudson Taylor's, uh, uh, you know, missionary um, uh, movement in China. 
and we see that you know he was a very rich man like asapu mentioned but he gave away all his inheritance to george muller's orphanage you know george muller uh, he used to run an orphanage and he never asked anyone for money just prayed depended on god and god would just provide so imagine this man was so sold out for god like uh, you know uh, uh, we are learning in uh, kingdom building you know it's like you you sell everything just to take that pearl when you find that pearl you know that is of great worth the treasure in the field the the person went and sold everything they had just to buy that uh, field so that they can have that treasure okay so i think that is uh, a, a ct stud is a good example of the parable that jesus spoke you know that um, they just sold out for the kingdom of god everything that we do say you know we say in god it's for your um, kingdom and so he lived uh, that ways uh, which is very very um, encouraging to know and also he did a missionary work in china what did he do in china what is the missionary work he did in china asapu anything you know about his missionary work in china his contribution he was sharing the gospel to local population he was sharing the gospel to local population anything else he did apart from that no okay um, and then uh, you said he also came to uh, went to india and africa right city stud india and africa as well okay okay naimi carmichael uh, we know she's um, uh, she born in ireland and uh, you know um, she began volunteering with the china inland mission um, but was refused due to some health reasons then she spent 2 years in japan and sri lanka and then she came to south india uh, and basically in tamil nadu uh, you know she started the donavur uh, fellowship and you know the donavur fellowship is still running that orphanage today it's even there today i know many uh, orphan children who have met you know doing well in life um uh, standing on their own feet uh, married settled having good jobs so uh, what a great work that has been left behind and is still continuing uh, basically she um, you know cared and rescued uh, these young girls who, who were taken as uh, temple prostitutes you know a uh, very young children were taken as temple prostitutes and so she Uh, rescued them and uh, uh, she started this orphanage uh, you know so you you should know when when somebody is doing something like this uh, what a lot of uh, threat to their lives being a lady itself but you know just look at the the courage and the boldness and the social reform that she brought about and how she saved so many and how many of them have known the gospel received christ and are also doing a lot of missionary work who are raised up in this donavur uh, fellowship okay thank you asapu we'll move on to uh, oh we have 4 um, minutes only okay anyone wants to ask any questions um, with people who have already shared so far anyone i want to ask any questions no questions sorry why in front of camera what oh oh one of the questions here is why should we uh, go in front of the camera and present so that our e e learning students and your other uh, classmates can get to know who uh, each one of you are at least see you right you don't have to worry because you don't not you can't don't see anyone's faces and you don't uh, you know you just have to look into your notes and just uh, the present don't worry about that yeah no questions okay um if there are no questions i just wanted to uh, let you know that uh, you know i uh, this is about kingdom builders and the kingdom of god class i had told you that we missed uh, the class on 2nd october right so i'm going to do 2 uh, hours of recorded lecture so i have posted that recorded lecture um uh in the uh, in the classroom page please take time to uh, listen to it okay 
uh, it's two hour, uh, uh, almost two hours of lecture time. So please take time to listen um, uh, chapters uh, 10 and 11. Uh, chapter 10 is will be something that you will learn in detail in uh, the end times. It's a separate course, uh, but I've just kind of briefly gone through the content that is there in the textbook. I've also, uh, you know, thought a little more about the, um, uh, uh, you know, the the scripture passages that are there and the covenant that God has made with people, uh, uh, foretelling, you know, the literal kingdom that is coming and explaining that in detail. Um, uh, but the rest of it you will learn more in the end times. But if you have any questions when you listen to this lecture, you can make a note of it and post it in the classroom page and I will um, answer it. Is that fine? Okay. And with that, we've ended our, uh, uh, our study on the publication Kingdom of God. Uh, tomorrow when we have our class, we will uh, begin our study about Kingdom uh, Builders. Okay. And then I think tomorrow we can decide when we can have uh, the assessment for uh, the, the second half of uh, the kingdom of God. Okay, we'll go for our break and come back. And after that, the others can be ready. Thank you.